All right. So I, I'll be talking about um, developing a system that is bound for Mars, so it's not a complete mobile vehicle, but I'll be talking about a sample handling and distribution uh, suite of mechanisms that will be sent to Mars as part of the ExoMars mission of the European Space Agency. Um, and uh, so if you imagine mm, the exploration of the planet Mars is of course an, an undertaking that involves a, a series of missions and going back several decades, the first successful landings were done in the 1970s and NASA of course has a uh, continuously ongoing program to send uh, robotic missions to Mars um, but also in Europe oops oh okay I was getting oh okay touching the connector it's not a good thing also in Europe we are doing um, Mars missions uh, so 10 years ago there was an initial Mars uh, orbiter mission and small lander mission by the European Space Agency we are now working on uh, the so-called ExoMars mission due for launch well the rover part is due for launch in 18, 2018 um, a rover let's say in size between the MER rovers that Gabrielle talked about and the MSL Curiosity rover um, and this vehicle will be equipped with a subsurface uh, drill to take samples from uh, below the surface and those samples will be analyzed inside the rover um, but before they're analyzed they are actually processed mechanically by the sample handling mechanisms that uh, my company Kaiser Trader uh, are developing for the European Space Agency and um, so this is an illustration an exploded view of the rover vehicle which shows um, the internal laboratory also referred to as analytical uh, laboratory drawer or ALD uh, this is within the rover um, and the drill to take samples is mounted in the front and inside the rover then to process the samples is a set of mechanical systems mechanisms that uh, accept the sample from the drill uh, using uh, something like a an extension and retraction mechanism uh, into which the drill drops the sample, so either uh, soil-like materials or solid uh, rock cores, whichever the case may be, and then um, that that mechanism is re retracted and the sample material drops into the um, one mechanism uh, that physically uh, crushes and powderizes the material further to be suitable for a number of analytical instruments that require fine uh, grain sizes and this powder um, is then uh, stored in what's called a dosing station or metering system um, which initially collects the sample powder and then hands it over then hands it over to um, the next mechanism which is a carousel which presents the powder to the instruments and, and this set of mechanical systems is referred to as the SPDS that we are developing sample preparation and distribution system it is accommodated inside the so-called analytical laboratory which is um, this subsystem and again this is inside the rover so you have a sense of where things are and how they look um, so this set of mechanisms is designed to work with samples of Mars and so we needed to take assumptions on what we know from previous missions about Mars regolith as well as Mars uh, rock-like uh, materials and I will walk you through the individual mechanisms one by one this is the initial one so-called core sample handling mechanism which is the arm-like device um, with a sample holder into which the the drill will dump one sample at a time and then the system retracts um, so it uses extendable belts 
um, it, it, and it can be operated dozens of times as required, although the number of samples taken during the mission by the drill is probably limited to uh, 10 or so. And um, on top of this um, arm-like mechanism, there is a dispenser for blank sample materials that are needed for one by one of the analytical instruments. Um, below that system is what's called the, the crusher um, that I mentioned earlier. So the crusher uh, receives the sample from the top uh, because um, this mechanism, as it retracts, the, the bottom of the sample container is uh, opens passively and then exploiting gravity, um, the sample falls into the crusher which sits below um, the, uh, the sample acceptance uh, mechanism. And the crusher works like a jaw crusher um, and it would take several hours to um, Mm, let's say homogenize the grain size distribution of the sample to the desired value and um, so this crusher will then during the crushing continually um, dispense the powder at the bottom so again uh, we require gravity for the system to work and the powder produced by the crushing actually is collected in the so-called dosing units that you see here in this mechanism which sits below the crusher and there are two redundant, there are redundant dosing cups or collection chambers that you can uh, see here next to one another and they would be able to store the powder for days or weeks um, and well, once they are needed the system would turn around to position the, the collection chambers over the carousel which sits here and then a metering mechanism would be actuated to dispense the powder in uh, known bits of uh, volume uh, so 0.1 uh, milliliters per dispensing cycle and again we rely on gravity for the powder to uh, fall out through this um, hopper uh, into the carousel uh, onto different sample uh, holding positions. So there is one sample tray which sits here, it's called the refillable container. Um, powder, sam sample powder that is dispensed onto it uh, would be viewed by optical instruments, close-up instruments like a Raman uh, spectrometer uh, and a microscopic imager uh, and other sample positions on the wheel are occupied by ovens that are used by a mass spectrometer like uh, instrument which uh, first thermally processes the sample and then analyzes the gases that are involved, evolved. And so, in the end, I mean, we are relying on, on gravity in a number of instances, as you will have uh, realized, because we, mm, the system is designed such that uh, passing from one, one mechanism to the next, we uh, exploit, let's say, free fall as the method of transfer of the sample from one system to the, to the processing uh, mechanism, which... Uh, follows in the chain of sample handling mechanisms and so we needed of course to look at this problem um, of how um, mm, the vertical sample transfer uh, by free fall would depend on, on the reduced gravity that we have on Mars which is one third of Earth gravity and we approached that by uh, two different methods. Uh, so we, uh, there were two parabolic flight campaigns um, mm, simulating mass gravity in which the hopper of the dosing funnel of the dosing mechanism, metering mechanism was evaluated, one in uh, 2011 and the other one um, in a campaign run by the Technical University of Munich in December and we have a talk right after this presentation that will talk about that in detail. Um, so different shapes uh, of hoppers were evaluated in those parabolic flights. In parallel, a numerical simulation was done using discrete element modeling to simulate the flow of the powder through the hopper following the action of gravity. 
And actually we have a nice agreement uh, between um, the simulation and parabolic flight test because normally we do not have the opportunity to test at partial gravity uh, during this project. Uh, so there have been only very few instances where we were able to um, do this kind of test. So we rely very much also on modeling um, of the vertical transfer of the sample powder using gravity. And um, so see here on this slide you see the um, some results from the discrete element simulations. Um, on the, the behavior of the hopper or the powder flow through the hopper. Um, we're talking very small volumes of um, a few tenths of a milliliter, um, so less than one gram. And uh, the simulation was actually done also for lunar gravity, for Earth gravity and Mars gravity, and it shows the effects of um, friction coefficient between the wall of the conical hopper and the um, uh, the sample powder and also the effect of slit size on mass flow. So what's plotted here is the normalized flow of powder mass um, versus time, so normalized flow rate. And you see that at Luna, the system design uh, as such uh, would not work very well or not at all at lunar gravity uh, for some sample materials. For mass gravity, it, it works with some margin. Uh, okay, we've been doing lots of tests already with the system at Earth gravity using prototypes of the sample processing mechanisms uh, with different types of samples, uh, Mars simulants in mm, terms of soils, but also um, rock cores. And we did an end-to-end -end test um, of the chain of um, sample handling mechanisms. This is the actual design but it was mm, in incorporated into a, a test setup uh, to fit in a vacuum chamber to work at uh, simulated Mars atmospheric and temperature conditions, which is important to test the mechanisms in uh, to verify the mechanical designs. Um, so this so-called end-to-end testing was done earlier this year, first at laboratory conditions, but then in a Mars simulation chamber where we process a number of um, materials that are considered Mars-like. You see some scenes looking, viewing down into the crusher, uh, watching the progress of crushing of a particular sample. This is sample powder dispensed on the carousel, on the tray that can also be uh, removed from, uh, that can also be uh, cleared. Uh, to be able to process a number of samples. This is a close-up of sample powder being dispensed into one of the, uh, the sample hoppers. Um, and you see here powder flowing out of the hopper. Uh, we also evaluated um, Mars soil simulants containing ice. All of this was done at simulated Mars conditions. Um, I'll skip to the, yeah, I jump to the conclusions. Um, so, the system that we are developing is uh, aimed for flight in 2018, and we have uh, yes, we have a suite of prototypes or so-called breadboards that have been evaluated. Uh, reduced gravity is an issue, um, and also adherence of powder to mechanical to to surfaces of um, parts of the system that. It's also been observed um, to be an important effect in uh, actual missions, and we are taking care of that uh, by certain design measures. And we are on track to, um, to, to deliver the system in time for flight in 2018, and delivery is actually due in uh, 16, so three years from now. Thank you.